All right, ladies and gentlemen of the viewing audience, I was going to air my show today as I had planned, talking a little bit about them extraterrestrials and ETs and some occultic type reference, but unfortunately, just as I was starting to get into that, starting to do my research, I get a... I get a call from the very people I'm on air with right now, and they tell me of some bombs that have been, you know, detonated in Boston. Um, so, um, yeah, I get that call, and it had happened on the 15th, which was the day that apparently we were supposed to be um, blown up by North Korea. So when I heard the word bomb, I thought to myself, oh, oh no, that ain't, that, that ain't good, man, but... Luckily for us, there's a much smaller bomb situation. Okay, so that being said, there's a multitude of theories, but all sort of point towards the same thing, which is that it was an inside job. It was orchestrated by the very same people, if not a faction of those very same people, who orchestrated 9-11, 7-7 in London. Uh, signs point to it. Let's see. Drills. Drills being run for that exact scenario as it was taking place, which is uh, very, very helpful if you're going to, if you as a government are going to orchestrate an attack and you were afraid of getting caught, you could easily say if you were caught that it was just a drill. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain here, folks. It's this guy is not a patsy, it's not a bomb, it's, it's a drill. The same thing happened on 9-11. You got planes doing, uh, Navy, Air, Air Force doing some sort of exercise uh, pertaining to terrorist threat. Um, what if the Twin Towers would get knocked down? And of course they were. So I, I've called in some people here today. Um, to talk about this, people who are way more caught up. I wish I had had some more time, but this is all happening very fast. The city of Boston is in a state of panic. People are cowering in fear with their guns in their hands in their basements and crap in their pants at the sheer thought that they themselves might be blown up. But it's, like I said, it's all happening very fast. Uh, they, The government has of late demonstrated their their ability to jam cell phone signals as they did in the downtown area and may still be doing. Now, I have called up um, my grandfather down, my grandfather-in-law down the uh, 617 area code, Watertown, Massachusetts, right on the outside of Boston, and he is able to use his cell phone and is not aware of any cell phone jamming, but yet it did take place, so that... That's kind of open for debate in my head right now because I'm not so sure, but I do know that cell phones were being jammed. We've got a Family Guy um, video now um, surfacing on the web, and there's a lot of debate on it, but I'm going to clarify right now what the, the Family Guy video. I'm going to clarify this for people who can't what, yet quite grasp the concept. The Family Guy video, these are two scenes, two clips spliced together, yet from the same episode. The latter, of course, not following the former. The one where Peter's sitting in a bar and he dials on his cell phone. Quite, you know, cell phone. Dials twice, you know, two bombs went off. Um, and detonates two bombs. Following a scene where he, he tells a newsman, he says, uh, you know, I, I just... He says, how did you do it, Peter? And he says, I just drove it. And ran over a bunch of Boston Marathon types. Well, I mean, if you, you nah, that it's the same, it's the same episode. And they aired, took it off of um, the Fox Cable News Network and told people it didn't exist, and so people bought it. And it goes to show you that uh, people really do have a really short attention span. Like, yo, um, you know, I remember that episode being aired, but they didn't. It told me it didn't air, so I guess it didn't air. But it did, and Seth MacFarlane, the the, the man who makes The Family Guy, um, the Cleveland show, uh, he's, he's a Comedy Central type and a comedian in himself, clearly an idiot, 
told um just by the work he does. Anyway, told told yeah he's he's posting uh he, he's saying uh oh, you know I'm real disappointed that y'all out there for posting this together and putting it on the internet, but I'm far more disappointed with the man who made the episode. Either way, um, all of this is coming together. We've got the Waco thing down in Texas right now. I call it Waco the second because it is the second time that our United States government has blown up Waco. First time it was a, a religious sect, a, a compound of sorts, and uh, long story short, they blew him up, they blew him up, they killed everybody, which is, which is, um, which was really the first step, wasn't it, into where we are now? Then they blew up Waco again with a, with a missile, fertilizer plant. We've got uh, a situation on the internet right now, the very thing you're listening to as you tune into this um, Dark City Radio. And me, your host, Fox Niner, you're hearing me, but you won't for long if this thing works out the way they want it to. The, the corporations are now working in tandem with the United States government to, to um, share information warrantlessly, which is why we call it the... Internet Patriot Act, the CISPA, the Cyber Patriot Act, because simply put, it is a Patriot Act. Uh, with phones, they justified um, tapping into your phones by saying, you know, terrorism. Now, they justify going on to your Internet and getting all of your private information, which you were stupid enough to give people on Facebook. You're bad. And they can tap into this and do with it what they choose to do. So now... That being said, if I mean it's not the bill itself, it's it's applicability. Say the government right now says everybody who votes Ron Paul is a terrorist. Done. Nothing else to it. Everybody who votes Ron Paul is a terrorist. Much in the same way, everybody who votes Ron Paul is a crazy person in California and should have their guns confiscated, right? Anyway, say they do that. Everybody who has uh, expressed their uh, constitutional right to choose will be kicked off the internet, targeted and eradicated. And so, with all of this going on, the situation in North Korea, I'm getting, oops, with the situation in North Korea, the the government orchestrated attacks, and then in the north in Boston, and the south in Texas. We've got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff to talk about today. So I'd like to bring my um, boy Barry Prince on from British Columbia in Canada on the West Coast. And my friend here, Wonder, from Toronto, to talk a little bit about what's going on here and some insight. Now, one, Wonder, sounds like a robot. You're going to have to mind him for that. Wonder is, Wonder is not a cyborg. He is a human being. I've seen him, or at least I think I have, and... Hold on, Wonder. Hold on, brother. Hold on. Patience. Patience is a virtue, one that will guide you well through life. Okay, so, Barry, um, you, you said you've had some interesting information here today. What do you have? Well, Fox, all I've been doing today... Hi, folks. Um, all I've been doing today, Fox, is kind of watching the information and looking at the underground. Um, I, I looked at the Greenway Report and, and listened to him and the Grudge Report, Infowars, all their write-ups. And um, there's more and more information coming to the surface all the time. This is really a smudge in the government's face, and it's going to backfire on them. But um, I think we're in for a real, real bad time coming up here very, very shortly. I think this is just the start of of some really hard um, martial law um, reasons for martial law to be implemented in the United States of America, basically an open credit card to implement martial law. Anytime you lock down three states... Um, and declare martial law on the pretext of looking for one individual sounds a little far-fetched to me, and we really got to ask yourself why and who's behind the scenes and why this was done. I think there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Well, we have had pictures surfacing from the great American city of Boston that there are, as I've been, as I've seen on Facebook so far, um, police busting into people's houses and searching them, going through their possessions and their, you know, like what they're doing in California right now, but to a much higher degree in California, they're confiscating guns. So you go into, um, you know, a doctor's office and say, 
Hi, I'm depressed, looking for some pills. Oh, by the way, I'm apparently mentally ill, so I have to, you know, give up my gun and my husband's gun, who's not even mentally ill. And that's what they're doing, door-to-door gun confiscation. Well, the same thing is happening in Boston, but I don't even think there's any justification. No, we're looking for a gun. Yeah, what, on the pretext for looking for one guy, they're going door to door and lock down three states. What the hell is going on? There's countries that have bombs going off that kill hundreds of people, and and you don't see the reaction. This is being so so glamorized and so studioed by the government. They're up there pounding their. I mean, if you look at the the question that was asked by the by the gov, at the government on their first on the, on the first press conference by an InfoWars reporter. I mean, the look on their face when they were first confronted with the fact that they were running a drill that morning. If you look at that video, man, they, they basically turn white. And they look like they somebody just walked on their grave. And it's the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. Everybody in that conference, standing at the microphone, turned white. Well, I'll tell so, you right now. Boston, turn that one in, man. That's worth a good laugh, I'll tell you. Well, I'll tell you right now, the Boston thing started out as a, a controlled explosion. It was done by the bomb squad. It was even reported on the Boston Herald that it was uh, a controlled explosion. Um, so, and of course, then it happens, and then people are you know labeling a terrorist thing. But with that being said, uh, the whole the the whole martial law thing. It is a show. I mean, not the martial law thing. The um, with what's going on in Boston, New York City, the tri-state area, that is um, that is hyped up, and they're making it look like uh, much more than it is. And I'm not so sure about that stuff that goes on in other countries, bombs, but here in America, every time somebody drops a stink bomb in the movie theater, people are running around in circles with their arms flailing in the air, screaming terrorists in Guantanamo Bay. You know what I mean, brother? Yeah, and the government just gobbles it up, buddy, and in comes the military. What is the military doing on the streets of the United States of America? They're not even supposed to be there. You know, they're not supposed to intertwine with your police. Well, and, they are. and it's we, all in the act of terrorism. Well, terrorism is one of those, uh, you know, genius inventions. It's a word that means that is so broad, so generalized. Like you could say anyone is a terrorist if they do something against the government. For political gain that might scare people. So say, um, if I fly a sign that says the Second Amendment is a privilege, is a right, not a privilege, um, I could be a terrorist because uh, you know you could you could bend anything anyway and make me look like a terrorist. But with what's going on right now, um, you've got like uh, I, I guess what I'm kind of getting at now with this whole everything happening at once um, scenario is sort of like martial law because. Everything is kind of happening all at once. You've got them blowing up Waco again. You've got oil spills in Arkansas. You've got uh, you've got bombings in Boston and MIT sh- MIT shooting um, in Boston, Cambridge. Now you've got exactly. uh, now you've got a massive shootout in Watertown, where I was just telling you all my uh, grandfather's living down at. It's um. So like I said, Fox, they're going full tilt boogie right now. And the reason, I honestly reason they're doing that is because they're scared. Because the information is coming out by the truckload. Yeah, they're afraid that the people are going to revolt. Uh, well, from my point of view, I don't... What? What were we going to say? Oh, what were we going to say? Oh, wow. I thought somebody else, I thought somebody uh, else was talking. I'm waiting. Uh, sorry, it's all good. Um... Okay, so, um, that being said, um, there is, yeah, they, they are getting scared. From my point of view, I don't know if people are going to rise up or not, but they sure as hell think they are. Um, with the internet and with the information that we're getting, um, from, like, the internet has the power, as they have clearly seen, to be used as a tool in starting a revolution, and sparking a revolution. That's why Facebook is the most anti-social networking site out there. Because clearly, the, the, the Egyptian revolution, or if you want to call it a revolution, I don't really know if they got anywhere with that. Now they're just being controlled by the Muslim Brotherhood. But either way, it was sparked using Facebook. And now, Facebook knows what its site is capable of, and they have to shut it down using means like uh, CISPA, um, Cyber Internet Security, I think it's uh, 3253, HS3253, passed through um, Senate, 
today or has oh, yeah. some representatives. Yeah. Yep. Well, he, it's, 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 it's a home oh, man. It's like, they're going to do this Fox. So they, they could really clamp down on the American people. And what they want to do is stop the information from flowing amongst people. And it is, you're going to see that they're already labeled against terrorists. Anybody that has anything to do with truth is a terrorist. I mean, you look at the article in the L.A. Times about Alex Jones. They're calling him a ranting, raving idiot because of his bomb theories in Boston. I mean, well, they're labeling us all as idiot terrorists. Well, well, I'll tell you right now, every last one of us, including me, is a terrorist, according to the United States government. But they can't, yes, we they can't actually come and get us or punish us for it because, honestly... You can't do that without people freaking out. So they're, right now they're looking for ways to justify taking us out and taking out our ability to communicate with other so-called labeled terrorists so that we can't organize terrorist freedom revolution. We're Second Amendment terrorists, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it's, it's the big fear factor, man. Well, All about making them so scared, and they've done that. People are terrified. They did people in, in Connecticut and Boston and stuff. They had no idea that this martial law was going to be implemented. It just shocked the shit right out of, excuse me, shocked the heck right out of people. And if you think they do this for one guy, well, what if something really serious happens in the United States? They're going to have all the justification they need to all of a sudden just clamp us all down. Period. What blows my I mind? That coming. I can see that coming, Fox. I think this was just a, a trial run. I know why I know why they jammed the cell phones in Boston while that was going on because there's an article published right before the thing itself on the day it happened that the uh, bomb squad was doing a drill that this is just a controlled explosion and they even announced it on a loudspeaker I'm pretty sure of that too but I do know for, I do know for a damn fact that it was a bomb drill and then um, I mean, it went off. It killed a bunch of people. People would be calling up their friends saying, what the f what just happened? Um, you know, like, I'm pretty sure this was done by the bomb squad or by our government right off because of what they read in the paper that day. That was on the Boston Globe, man. I know. But it's quashed now. I mean, the, the, the FBI comes on, on national TV there and says, these are the two subjects. Don't focus your attentions on anybody else because these are the two guys we're looking for. End of conversation. Like, holy smokes. They can tell you anything they want and they expect you to believe it. Well, that's, that's, they're, they're, they're psychopaths. I mean, if you actually, if you actually do research into psych a lot, in psychology, psychopathy, you actually realize that these people are psychopaths. You realize that the psychopathic nature and their tendencies to play games and get off on other people's suffering and their, you know, the way they just, what what they do with um what they do with our society it's it's messed up like uh, like what I was saying with the Family Guy thing they were taunting us by putting that up um, putting up a video that indicates future events and then once uh, once people realize what's going on they take it down they tell the other people like no nah, nothing happened they're like oh you're right nothing happened and they're just sitting there behind the curtain laughing their ass yeah, off. They they did the same thing in 9-11. I, I, I don't know the exact clip, but I know I looked at it on YouTube. They had a video or a picture of planes flying into the towers, and this was maybe a year or so before, the act, before it actually happened. So they've done this before. I think it's a psychological ploy on their behalf. It's because it entertains them. I'm, I'm not, I hate to say I. You know, that's what it is. I mean, it's psychological, but at the same time, it entertains them. Being able to tell the people what they're going to do, to toy with them, and then to take it down and to tell the very same people that they weren't going to do it and that they're making it all up and that they actually believe it, that must be a game to them. With all these wars going on in the Middle East and you know, mass destruction on our part, like they say weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, I say we've got more nukes than anybody, you know? And Obama, Obama's like, you know, he... he um, he talks about how, you know, he talks about, um, you know, how great America is. And like you were saying with um, how he, how Obama's weeping over the losses of lives at Sandy Hook, but he doesn't give a damn about the uh, people that were blown up in shock and awe back in 02, you know? 
Yeah, well, Obama is the worst president the United States of America has ever had, as far as I'm concerned. And what he's done, he should be in jail already for, in my opinion. I mean, look at everything he does. Everything he does, everything he says is a lie. Everything he does is 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 an attack on freedoms. He supports Muslims. He attacks Christians. He attacks right wingers who want to speak the truth. He attacks anything to do with civil liberties. Period. And man, I used to think that Obama wasn't all that, that he's just a puppet. But if you think about it, I believe perhaps that Obama may be the yes man for good for the NWO. And that Obama could be like uh, the, the, the big dude. The, the, no, the, the Chancellor and uh, V for Vendetta. But the only difference is the Chancellor don't make the rules. The, the secret societies and the banksters tell Obama what to do, and Obama says, absolutely, I will do that with pleasure. And in fact, let me add on to that, because I enjoy being a dictator, and this is how it's going to be. It's like crazy dictator being told what to do by crazy bankers, and they're both working together like it's one big happy family. Yeah, well, it's, all, you know, it's like what's going on overseas takes our, our attention away from what's going on here in, in America, you know? Uh, Obama is, is how do I say Obama? Um, I hope they impeach him. That's all I can say. Because if they don't, I can see America just coming apart at the seams. Well, unfortunately, nobody voted for Obama in this election. I firmly believe that, well, I mean, technically speaking, people did vote for him, but not by choice. Uh, polls being rigged. Like when you, it's if all you rigged. To an, yeah, if you were to go into an election, you, you've heard stories where oh, yeah. you went to um, the, uh, the electronic voting booth, you would, uh, you know, turn on the screen, type in, want to vote for um, Ron Paul? Thank you for selecting President Barry Cetera of these United States. <laughs> no, nobody voted for him, man. The elections were rigged. I'd say it was uh, a bit like, uh, I, I don't really know. I don't really think that many people voted at this point because if you think about it um, Romney Romney puppet number two was just as uh, just as twisted as puppet number one who's already twisted things up you know what I mean it, yeah so. I was watching the American elections the night it happened you know and, and uh, I didn't see the end of it but when I tuned in and was watching the results Romney was way ahead of Obama and then all of a sudden I wake up in the morning and I find out Obama's been elected well, that kind oh, of yeah. I he, was way, that, he was way ahead of him. He was way ahead of him, and all of a sudden, Obama made an incredible comeback. <laughs> well, well, you know, they probably installed that new voting booth software, <laughs> that uh, Obama 2.0 into the, uh, I don't know, dude, but you know, it's... you got to ask yourself, Fox, anybody, the people that have the power to pull off something like 9-11 sure have the power to rig an election. It's done with electronics. Whatever happened to the old days where you count the votes and there ain't no bullshit. Now they do it electronically and they can do whatever they want. Push a few buttons. Get a geek in there. And okay. the problem well, well, I'm going right now, brother. Nobody voted for Obama. Obama voted for himself. Why not? So. It was a rigged election, bud. But here we got this. Just another... All this stuff about Obama. Everything you hear about Obama... He, 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 to me, he's the biggest criminal in the world, and yet he's still sitting in power. Okay, we brother. You really have to ask yourself why. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on here for a second because it's getting really interesting. I'm listening to uh, talk radio lately. I'm listening to even CNN, and I'm, getting, I'm, turning on, uh, I'm turning on my computer, and I'm reading articles from AOL that are seemingly interesting. They're always trying to hint at what we already know, which is that something uh, ain't quite right with what went down, like, on AOL, I pull up my AOL page, and it says, um, apparently, the, the Federal Bureau of Investigation had been eyeballing this cat who had bombed, um, supposedly bombed Boston on April 15th for quite some time. And uh, I didn't read it, but I, I kind of got what they're hinting at. Now I'm looking at uh, InfoWars, and it says, Glenn Beck says Obama is covering up truth of Boston bombing. Yeah, and, uh, he's, his... he's threatened to, to go viral with it on Monday if the government doesn't come clean, and he's going to put it on the rave, uh, which yeah, is well, a huge audience. 
Glenn Beck is an idiot and he'll never do that. But um, Sean Hannity said something very enlightening the other day. He says, all of the gun legislation that they are passing will not, would not, and could not prevent another school shooting. He said that on national syndicated radio talk show. That is the Sean Hannity show. And I thought to myself, well, damn, that is something else that yeah, Sean Hannity is talking some common sense, something Sean Hannity has never done in his entire life. <laughs> but what do you think Glenn Beck is supposed to be doing? Because the last time I heard Glenn Beck was coming out with some truth, it was about the FEMA camps, and unfortunately, Glenn Beck didn't come out with any truth. What he did was he showed a picture of a watchtower that was probably at some random prison in Bumscrew Nowhere, and then he let off with it. Well, I can't say for sure, okay, Fox, but I've been watching Glenn Beck a little bit lately, and I honestly think that his real basic fundamental thinking is changing. And he's done a few things and said a few things lately here that have actually me, uh, inspired a little bit of hope in me. Like He has uh, apparently made this statement that if the government doesn't come clean on their involvement in the Boston Marathon bombings, now, this, is, this was on three or four sites that I looked at today. I, I don't have a great memory, but I looked at three or four sites, and this was all in there, that he's, ex he's threatening to expose the government on Monday if they don't come clean on these bombings on well, his show I'll called The Rage. So now, brother. Glenn Beck. Happens, sorry, go yes. ahead. No, 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 go ahead, man. Well, he's, he's got a, a bit of an audience, so if he does have anything to say, it's anything that said, anything that brings any truth to this, Fox, in my books, is good. So if he says anything negative and brings any information out, it's a good thing. Well, um, Glenn Beck went off the Fox News Network. I remember when he did that. Um, I, I'm not sure why. He's a, he's sort of a pretend conspiracy theorist, like an imitator. But a lot of what he had said in the past, it was almost like he wanted you to look into it yourself, but knew he couldn't say it because of the people he worked for. But yeah, at, the same, at the same at the same time, brother, he still is one of those one of those uh, you know one of them types. And usually, when he does that, it is for um, what we conspire about. It is for one of the. Um, it isn't for a good reason, and it will probably be an, a disinformation campaign. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll take that to heart. But this is the statements he's made anyway, so we'll see where it goes. But, oh, yeah, I'm reading it right here. You have till Monday to come clean. So I am going to pay attention to that because I do want to hear what he has to say. Because SHTF, man, and everybody's going crazy on, uh, <laughs> on Portland, <laughs> on, um, on Clyde Lewis's Ground Zero talk show out of Portland, Oregon. Um, people are calling in the phone lines, uh, the call screeners. I called in, the call screen is real stressed out right now. He's like, man, I'm glad you're on topic, dude, because we get people calling in from everywhere, absolutely everywhere, freaking out about Waco, about Boston, about vaccine testing on uh, infants, which is something they're doing right now. I wonder, um, do I, 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 go ahead, sorry. Uh, well, I'm just saying, I wonder who would volunteer, who would volunteer their child to be tested on using you being uh, have a vaccine, an anthrax vaccine tested on them. So I'm like, maybe they're not. Maybe they're having them taken from him. I don't know. Mm. Well, that's another subject altogether. That's a loaded loaded subject. So we'll leave yeah, that for another brother, day. Man. I know. I'm just saying, man. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on, and people are freaking out. So um, it's like it's all part of the the big picture, but it's a million little pieces. You're not a million, but there's quite a few little pieces all coming together. Like I said earlier, Fox, I just see them speeding up, like really going hard on certain issues. Like it's 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 an emergency that we get these bills passed right now because if we don't, we're all going to die tomorrow. And this is the mentality they're putting across, and and uh, it's it's crazy, man. It really is. What's happening in Boston this week? One thing is crazy. I want people to remember listening to this show right now. One thing I want everyone to remember is that in a state of irrational fear, a, a sort of a a uh, fear-based mentality where you can't really tell where it's coming from. A person psychologically will do anything they can to get rid of it, whether that means to pass legislation, to kill somebody, to demonize one group or another, or... Accepting whatever. the lies. Right, but people are scared, and honestly, they don't know why. 
they, they do know why, but they don't know who to blame. So they're looking for somebody to blame. The second they get an opportunity to do that, they're going to take it so they can make it go away and get back to whatever three kids and the mortgage job they had. You know what I mean? Yeah, life, life is simple. Once you take away, once you put people out of their comfort zone and uh, life doesn't seem so simple anymore, people want to go back to their, you know, their comfort zone, their couch, HLN, 12-pack of beer. They want to feel happy and content. So once... Once you take that away, they'll do anything to get it back. Yep. That's, that's yep. sort of what's happening right now, man. We're looking to point fingers at some guy in a white ball cap and a, bl- a black shirt. Man, if if you were if somebody bombed your building, I think as a law enforcement division, a very big and uh, n- a notorious law enforcement division, such as the Boston City Police, you would want to release a bit more of an accurate depiction of who of uh, the man whom destroyed your building that way people out there can keep a lookout for him but they said black hat um no black white hat black shirt isn't that like half of america right now too? <laughs> well you know fox all people have to do is get on the computers and look but it just seems like they don't want to even see the information because it's exactly reiterating on what you just said they don't want to get knocked out of the comfort zone but you know what I feel that everybody in America right now, inside their stomach, feels there's something wrong. Well, and what's wrong is I can't wear a white baseball cap anymore, man, because I'm afraid I'll get shot. <laughs> and make sure you don't take water from the rain because you can get a ticket for that, buddy. Say what? I've heard, I've heard of defacing a hamburger. I've heard of impersonating a sidewalk, which is, of course, anatomically impossible. <laughs> now you're saying, you're stealing water? Apparently, that's, I mean, I've seen that in quite a few clips down south in Arizona. I forget what state it was, but oh yeah, I guess God. it's against the law to gather rainwater. So, Wow. That's, that's, you that's figure that one, buddy. Well, you know what, man? Everything about the government is about control, buddy, and they're just going full tilt boogie. I mean, really, if a person just sits back and thinks about it for a couple of minutes, and everything that's gone down in the last 10 years, all the bills and acts that have been passed by the American government and what they're trying to do, it, it just looks like a, it's just a schmozzle, a schmozzle of, of unbelievable information that we really don't want to believe. And that is what I'm saying the psychopathic mentality. These people are all about control. And in my personal opinion, I don't think there is an end game. And if there is one, if there is one, they will do anything, no matter what the cost, to get to it. They don't care who lives, who dies. We're just collateral damage. We're just profit. We're just a block in their way. And they will push us over. That's NWO and Agenda 21, which is exactly what you're talking about, man. Oh, absolutely, they, brother. Absolutely. They have a vision. If, if they do exist, they have a vision of, of the Earth being populated by 500 million people and killing off three-quarters or, or more of the world's population. And to uh, them, that's justifiable because they're kings and we're peasants. Now, we that's, have to ask ourselves, kind of brother. We have to ask. Oh, kings and peasants. Now, let me tell you a little something about that. Las Vegas. When I was in Las Vegas, man, I saw an absolute two-class society. I saw the palace and the ghetto. And I saw a future model for America, a two-class society where you've got, like, you've got the casinos on Fremont and you've got the casinos on the Strip, and then the rest of the city is the ghetto, man. Yeah. 14,000-plus homeless, man, 14,000-plus. That is the future of America right there, man. <laughs> well, look at Detroit. I mean, look, look at all the major cities now in the state. Detroit is far gone, but the rest of them aren't far behind. Hey, i got to excuse myself for two seconds and cover up my bird because he's going to start squawking. Uh, uh, right These guys have got their um, family fortunes. They've got their lives. Got their Who's that robot? I think we're being tapped into. <laughs> Better call the NSA. Sorry about that. Okay, well, I'm not sure where I was going with that last bit, but the point is, man, that that is the end game, really. It's it's the rich and the poor, the poor relying on the rich. Uh, oh, the whole system is designed to have that sort of setup. And uh, what I'm seeing, man, it's... 
Are you still there, Barry? Yeah, I'm still here. Just uh, it's just like what I'm saying here is that the whole thing, the whole situation at hand here, it's 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 just complete chaos, man. It's just um, freaking. You got what's going on in Boston and Waco, and North Korea. It does seem like they're building up for something big, man. And um, how they're gonna go about um, reducing the population to 500 million? You've got me, man, because. The population of the planet is 7.5 billion. It would, you would have to remove 7 billion people in order to do that. And that, well, bluntly put, that is impossible at this well, point. Okay, no, wait a second. Hold weapons. on. If they had a plan, say they had a plan. Um, okay, well, I'm not saying it's impossible. To... I just like. It's not, it, it is possible because if these people are as radical as we know they are, they could have bunkers built underground where they could sustain themselves for a 10-year period before they return to the surface of the Earth. And who knows, maybe their they're thinking is that far, that maybe they will nuke the planet and destroy oh it. Maybe they'll, create, maybe they'll create a natural disaster, or maybe they'll unleash a plague on the planet that and disappear while, it, disappear while it does its thing, you know? There's lots of ways it could be done, Fox. Lots you know of what, ways. Brother, that might be what we're leading up to with these gun bills, with this chaos, with this martial law. Maybe... Maybe they're, maybe, just gonna, maybe they're just going to, maybe they're just, maybe yeah. that's some far fetch, but you know, you, you think about it, they have the, they have the, 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 the bugs that can do that. They can unleash a plague on this planet. And believe me, I'm honestly believe they have it. Um, and they could go into security. Um, the, the bug does its thing and they come out and all of a sudden all they have to do is spend the next 10 years burying the people. Just like V for Vendetta, brother, something major, yeah, exactly. cataclysmic exactly. took place and therein came a dictator, a fascist government to save the day and keep everybody in their place out of the, um, out of the, uh, the cloud of, um, out of a massive cataclysm, bro, came a came that kind of a government, and that's I think that might be what we would what we're headed towards if um, something doesn't change. And as far as the bunker thing, yeah, you're right, dude. They have plenty of underground bases, underground bunkers, Weather Mountain. Not many people talk about that, but they have uh, quite a bit of a uh, genetic information uh, genetic information stored at Weather Mountain. I'd say it's about. Um, Every one of us, at least in the United States, has been documented and filed and databased in that um, uh, top secret government facility. And um, it is a place that could sustain our government for, as you say, I don't know, 10 years, but I would say for five years. Three years. Yeah, about three to five years, but I'd say that's just about enough time for. Um, you know, the dust to settle and the uh, anarchy to fall and everything to kind of fall back into place for them to swoop in and fix everything back up and play savior again, just like Obama. Exactly. Who knows what dwells inside the minds of these guys because they are very, very evil people. They are. They really are. And they have the knowledge to control the world and do whatever it is they want to do with it. And with that ultimate power... They can uh, they can do whatever they want. I mean, that's the ultimate goal of somebody as sick and twisted as they are is to have world dominance. That's what Hitler was all about. He was he spent he spent copious amounts of time alone in his room thinking of ways he could control the world. And by God, if somebody act if somebody like that actually got that opportunity, they would take it and the. And the power they could have, the power they could have using their intellectualism, as smart as these people are, they could find different ways to do it, different things to do to control people. But this is on a much more mass scale, massive, um, it's on a much more larger scale. It's not like um, just one dictator. It's a group of twisted individuals, bankers, corporations, people who control the bankers, people who control the corporations, and people who control them. The pyramid is much taller than we are told it is. But these are the people well, who are chilling out in that pyramid. Yep, yeah, they want to control the world, period. Definitely, man. They have that mentality. They're called they, globalists. I don't, believe that, there, man. I don't believe that we should have to control the world, but unfortunately they do. And now we have to – I mean, it's really elaborate, man. They've been doing this, doing this 
for a very long time. They know yeah, how to do it. They know what to do. They know how to control your mind. They know how to control your psyche and your world. And They're I'm sure, for, I'm sure that it, we think, well, we've got all these guns, so we're ready to fight them. Man, you get a hundred guns, they get a hundred guns more. You, we, I think, really, I don't know. <laughs> I, I well, don't. I think, they, I think they'd be fighting their own U.S. military, buddy, because I told you last week I had a conversation yeah. with a couple active duty American soldiers. And the response they gave me, looking me in the eye, face to face in a coffee shop, I put a very, very direct question to him. And he says, you know, one of them is from Hawaii. And he says to me, buddy, he says, you know, really, when it came down to it, and it, we were told to shoot Americans. I, I can't speak for all the guys, but he says, my feelings are a majority of the American military would stand behind the people. Now, I don't know what that's worth, if it's just coming from two individuals, but it was kind of nice to hear them say that. I'll tell you right now, dude, you know what's going to happen? Even if our military sides with us, once that happened, they're going to label our United States military a terrorist threat. They're going to bring in foreign military to take out our United States military, and it's going to be a war between us with our military and them with their military, and it's going to be an all-out civil war, America versus the global elite. And by global elite, I mean the people who know right now that the United States is in fact a North American Union, who pretend to be Christians, who pretend to care about your rights, but really, it doesn't matter. They don't care about your rights. It's all a front. And in the end, it's going to be a worldwide civil war, man, if not at least in our country, because anybody who turns on these people is just a terrorist to them. Um, if I had a plan, if the plan was there to take over the world, the first thing you'd want to do, Fox, is destroy America. And I think that's what the number one agenda on their plan, because once America is gone, um, what's, what's going to stop them? It's the last thing you do when you take over the world is destroy America. Uh, I think we're being tapped into by the uh, CIA again. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, if you hear if you hear a whistle coming in from the, the sky, duck. yeah. Hey, Ro Robo Wonder, listen, brother, type it out. Just uh, type it out. I have no idea what you're saying. You have to. What we've got here, you know what I mean? Is a failure to communicate. Uh, that's my favorite movie quote. I, I'm sorry, I keep quoting it, but I love it. Anyway, um, but like I was saying, man, if our military, um. If our military um, taps, if our military sides with us, man, what is all that noise? If our military sides with us, they're going to take out our military because they don't care about our vets. One, um, they serve, they protect, they serve, and they serve overseas, and they torture their minds and their souls to, to, because they're told to do it and because it makes them money and because it can support their family. But in the end, they get thrown away like pieces of trash, man. One guy behold, was holding an inverted flag in Obama rally, and he was booed, and he was a veteran, but he was booed by everyone in the audience. Thrown, thrown, just, just people laughing at him, shunning him for doing it, you know. And I'm like, man, that's a veteran. You may hate the war, but you better, you better damn straight, you know, at least support the player. I don't know. I hate to play. And the, the, the point is, this other foreign countries, man. Look at the other other uh, other nations, man. You think uh, have more support for their warriors, man? But here they don't. So they would have no problem turning on their own soldiers and just eradicating them from the situation if they became a threat. And that's the way they see it. That's the way. That's the way it is to them. Yeah, it's too bad we can't get Idler in here because I'll get a couple comments from him. Either? No, Wonder. 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 Hold on a second. Um, Wonder is saying that the last thing you do is... Go yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah. I see that. He's, dude, you have to stop saying uh, we're, we are on air, you know. He's thick in the head. Thick in the head. Thick in the head. I don't... He's talking uh, about me, I guess. He thinks I'm right <laughs> off the wall. I don't know, so but I'm listen... Like, the, like the, point, the point is... Uh, how do I put this? Uh, they don't care about what they mess up. As long as they still have a way of controlling the world in the end, as long as they can preserve the continuity of their control 
of their um of their um proverb their um their hand their their if as long as they can ensure mass control they they will destroy anything to get to it as long as they know that their end game will still be met whether it's destroying the U.S., as Wonder is saying, or nuking a bunch of people. I don't think they're going to drop nukes. I'm going to tell you that right now, because if you were to drop a nuclear bomb, uh, the whole world is gone. There's nothing left to di dominate. There's no agriculture, no crops, no buildings. Everything is irradiated. I don't think that's how it's going to go down. Uh, mm -hmm. Biological weapons, possibly um, still a bit unlikely. Because that would, in turn, affect them as well, unless they invented an antidote, gave themselves a bunch of antidotes. It's just, it's a bit too complicated. I see a bit more of a, just a different solution, you know, a little bit different for them. But they will meet their end game, and it's coming soon. They blew up Waco again. They aggravated North Korea to the point where uh, Kim Jong is pointing his, uh, you know, his pretend missiles at us and saying he's going to fire, whether they actually take off or not, or do a Looney Tune uh, 180 and drop back on his head, I'm not sure. Either way, this uh, this whole situation, we're coming to a climax. And, the once, and it is April. Um, April is supposedly a really big time of year for what they, uh, for, um, let's just uh, say their occultic rituals and, the mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It's funny that the bomb in Boston went off on Patriot Day, eh? What a coincidence. Oh, definitely, dude. Uh, well, that's not a coincidence, man, but well, you're course being sarcastic. Of course of course. I'm, being sar sar I'm being sarcastic. Of course, of course. But the point is, um, April is planned. Yeah, definitely, dude. Everything is planned. These people, um, they... They're beyond sinister, man. Yeah. Uh, it's... Th th there's nothing they won't do to achieve the end game of their plan. Nothing. Nothing means anything to them except for what their agenda is. And if you believe that, if you're that sinister and that psycho, that, that's how you focus your life and that's how you live every day. Every breath, every breath you take is focused on your plan. Um, it, it, it makes you wonder, buddy. It really does. You, don't care, you can't believe that people like this actually believe in the world. Or they they exist, but they do, and that's a, that's a realization I came to a couple of years ago, and it uh, it was a hard one to accept. Well, listen, Barry, we we have to come to a close here, but I'm going to close out now. Get about two minutes, but I want to tell you all out there listening right now this this is a as unreal as it may seem, sitting and looking behind your television screen. Seeing all that chaos, but knowing it's only LCD and it's not really going to come and get you, it's getting closer and closer to home, man. I'm broadcasting from Maine. That is two states away from what happened in Boston. How long until they draw, until these, um, these psychopaths, these insane types, they drop a bomb in Augusta or Portland or Bangor, which is no more than 50 miles from where I'm at? How long until they drop one? You know, where, where, what is it going to take? I mean, this is a very big country. I'm not going to lie. It's really easy to pretend that this stuff doesn't exist because I'm telling you right now, out there in the Midwest, they'd be smoking a fatty. It's all chill, you know, whatever. It's not happening here. We're going to, you know, get back to the uh, the simple life. So, I mean, it's really hard to connect with what other people are feeling when they're so far away. But it's coming, man. It's coming. And uh, we're we're reaching that point. Today I really wanted to come on and, Talk about some really cool astrophysical, um, you know, concepts, but it's it's not going to happen. So I'm, I'm this is where we're at. So it's been good talking to you guys today, um, Barry Prince in the BC, my uh, Toronto correspondent Wonder, um, up there uh, in Canada land, just north of you, if you're in the United States. And um, yeah, anything else you want to say, Barry? No, nope, thanks for having me on, Fox. Yeah, All man. right, brother. It, it's been chill, man. It's been real chill. Um, Wonder, how about you, my robotic friend? I'm good. I'm good. All right. All right. Hey, hey, man. Um, um, hook me up with that voice synthesizer software you're using, and uh, we'll uh, tune in tomorrow. I'm going to be on about uh, 7 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time here on Dark City Radio. Um, that's just about it. We're out.